Yeah, to answer the first question, that hasn't hasn't hit me yet. Um, I mean, maybe a little bit I practice today, just kind of like, be like, man, I don't know how many more of these I'm going to get. But um, as far as creating explosives, you know, it's a it's a total team effort type of thing. We know we've got guys that can create explosives. we got, you know, receivers that can get open and win their one-on-ones. Uh, it just comes down to everybody executing all at the same time. And, um, yeah, I think as soon as that happens, that's when the explosives start to come at a higher rate. Is it hard not to be frustrated? Um, I mean, it's part of my job to care, but also part of my job to not get frustrated and not let that bleed into the way I play or how I affect my teammates. So, yeah, I mean, it's hard not to get frustrated, but that's only human, but it's also part of my job to work against that. Brian. Brew, as you get ready for your final home game, just what, what's this place meant to you in the three years you've spent here, and, uh, and what do you think it's going to be like Saturday out there on the field and kind of knowing you're going through everything for the last time? Man, um, I mean, these last three years have been, like, instrumental in my, my development as a young man and, and maturity, and, but um, I've also I found home here. and. Um, you know, made a lot of great relationships. Really have enjoyed my time around my teammates and coaches. Um, and it's, it's created like a second home for me. And really this is like my first home. Um, so like I'm a kid from Southern California and now whenever someone's like, when are you going home? I'll be, I'll be talking about going back to Knoxville. And um, man, it's, it's a very special place to me. All the emotions haven't really settled in yet. What is one or what are one of those memories that you cherish the most that has allowed you to feel like this is a second home to you? You know, it's hard to get particular about things like that, but I will say like outside of the football stuff, it's really like the locker room camaraderie. And then like being an older guy, you, you get to appreciate like, you know, getting to look out for younger guys or help guide them and tell them stories of stuff you've done and them telling that like, it's really the locker room camaraderie. It's the time you spend not necessarily playing football, but just with the guys that you, you love to be around. So, uh, you know, that's something I'll definitely miss. But hopefully, you know, things play out the right way. We get some more time together. Brew, this senior class has been part of the real change in this program over the last few years. What have you seen? What has it meant to you to watch this transformation? I mean, it means a lot because I think part of the mentality that I've carried just as a competitor is just like this expectation to win and whatever you do. Um, you know, I, I wasn't around for prior coaches, and I didn't really see too much of Tennessee's prior records. But um, I know that when, when I got here in 22, the standard stopped being, you know, we might win. It's we expect to win. Um, and I think following that in 23, we had an expectation to win, and that bar got pushed a little higher and then a little bit higher this year to the point where no one's thinking about 2020, 19, even 21 necessarily. It's this new standard of Tennessee should be in the SEC championship, should be competing for championships every year, should have 10 win seasons consistently. Um, but I, it's just, I'm proud to have been a part of that, that change. How have you seen the team kind of regroup, getting back into the league, coming off a loss, and get back to practice, get back to work? Honestly, um, you know, you talk about how, how to respond to a loss, and, and like this team is, uh, showed up today and probably had one of our better practices on the year uh, as far as effort. Um, nobody's feeling sorry for themselves or feeling like, you know, it's the end. And uh, it's just really about attacking it. You flush, yeah, we lost, flush it, move on. What's the next thing I can focus on? Because I can only control what I can control. And that's my effort today, tomorrow. Um, but guys are responding the right way. Brew, how's Mike Matthews developing and hanging in there with limited opportunities so far? Yeah, I mean, he's one of those guys, the younger guy that I get to spend a lot of time with. So that, that's like my little bro, my guy. And I tell him all the time, like, you know, just don't, don't be in a hurry. Don't feel like you're underachieving just because you're not living it out exactly how, how you pictured it. Um, I was a guy like him, a five-star, you know, number one athlete coming out. And my story didn't go the way I wanted it to. It's different than his situation. But um, for him, it's just I just remind him, like, 
Be urgent, but understand you have time. Don't let that time let you get lax. Still continue to push the needle, but just be ready for when that opportunity comes and don't look back when it does, you know? And remember how you felt in these moments when you're just itching to want to be on the field and contribute. Use that as soon as the opportunity comes. Let that fuel you and then take off. What kind of impact has Kelsey Pope had on you? Man, uh, I mean, we look at clips all the time and go, look, look how far we've come. But he's been somebody that I, I looked up to as a, as a mentor. Um, you know, being so far from home, far from family, you look for, for, uh, for men in your life that can give you guidance on and how to live right, do right, things like that. And he's been instrumental in that for me. But as far as development, man, he's, uh, he's one of a kind. Like, you won't find a coach that cares more, pours more into his guys, more attention to detail. Um, never takes a day off and doesn't let you take a day off. Like any athlete knows some days you wake up, you just don't want to go. Like it's, you don't want to get out of bed, you don't want to practice. And having a coach like him, he doesn't allow those, like you show up tired, he'll wake you up. He'll make you work hard. He'll make you repeat reps. You drop a ball, he'll make you go again and catch it two, three, four more times just to show. So you gain confidence in yourself. And he's hard on you so that when you get to the field Saturday, it's easy. But um, man, Coach Pope has been, just, I mean, I couldn't be more happy to have uh, experienced being coached by him. Thank you, Ryan. Obviously, find out tonight what the new playoff rankings look like, but you know, I know you guys are trying to focus on what you can control. But from your perspective, with two games left, what what do you all feel like you have to do, knowing that there's a chance you might be kind of comparing your or the committee might be comparing your resume to other teams with the same record? Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of stating the obvious. Got to win out. Got to win convincingly. Um, Got to show some things on tape that maybe we haven't shown previously so that whoever knows that we can do certain things at a high level. Um, you know, but really it's just going as hard as you can for these last two weeks. And, and, and the way my mind is, is like, I'm not even thinking about next week, I'm thinking about my next film session, you know, in an hour. So um, really just went out. And, and put all the hard work we've had on display. Like, we've talked a lot about the potential we have and almost being there. And um, now we've got two opportunities in these next two weeks to put that on display. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.